We begin our worship on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in the Collect of the Day, which is found printed in our bulletin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministry of angels and mortals. Grant that, as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. The first lesson is taken from Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending upon it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go 
and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord in this place, the, surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. The psalm is taken from Psalm 103. We will read the psalm responsively, breaking at the verse. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship has dominion over all. Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you ministers of his who will do his will. I will now read the epistle, which is the second lesson taken from Revelation 12, verses 7 through 12. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there were no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon has thrown down the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him, and by the blood of the Lamb and the word of they, their testimony, for they did not cling to life in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, 
You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Throughout the Judeo-Christian tradition, angels have fascinated God's people. As Psalm 103 reminds us, the angels are mighty ones who do God's bidding. They are supernatural servants who do God's will. And our collect for this festival day of St. Michael and all angels affirms the Christian doctrine of angels. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as your holy angels always serve and worship you in heaven, so by your appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. In the Old Testament, the angels originally exist as a heavenly court to cheer God on as the Almighty Creator fashions the world. After the creation of human beings, the angels function as intermediaries who interact with humans in order to advance God's plans. Sometimes that would be in the role of a messenger who communicates on behalf of the Almighty to instruct people concerning God's will. At other times, though, the angels would play a more aggressive role. They were the warriors in God's army to slay the enemies of God's people. According to the book of Isaiah, when the king of Assyria laid siege to Jerusalem, the angel of the Lord set out and struck down 185,000 men in the camp of the Assyrians. The king was forced to end his siege and return to Assyria, where he was assassinated by two of his own sons. Now in this story from Isaiah, the warrior angels defended the Jews at the national level. But as Judaism developed, angels also became thought of as the personal protectors of individuals. In today's Old Testament lesson, Jacob has a dream of a ladder reaching up to heaven with angels ascending and descending on it. Then the Lord God promises Jacob a supernatural blessing which will protect Jacob wherever he goes. But the presence of the angels in the biblical text suggests that the angels were involved 
and God's grand promise to Jacob of supernatural personal protection. Now, since Christianity grew out of Judaism, the Christians embraced the Jewish vision of angels. In the New Testament, the angels are the messengers of God. An angel appears to Zechariah to proclaim the impending birth of a very special son, one who will become John the Baptist. The angel Gabriel appears to Mary to foretell the birth of Jesus. Angels appear in the Bethlehem skies to sing out the good news of the birth of Jesus, the Savior. And the angels of Easter roll back the stone and announce the resurrection of Jesus to the women at the tomb. The New Testament also includes a little bit of imagery of the angels as the warriors of God's army. For example, our epistle lesson from Revelation tells of a war that broke out in heaven, with Michael leading the angels in a battle to defeat Satan and his enemies. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus declares that he could summon 12 legions of angelic warriors to come to his defense and to defeat the Romans. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace, so he does not resist his captors, but he hands himself over to suffering and death. Now in the New Testament, angels are also seen as being able to provide personal protection for individuals. An angel warns Joseph of King Herod's evil plans, and so instructs Joseph to take Mary and Jesus and flee to Egypt for safety. And angels minister to Jesus after his temptation in the wilderness and during his agony in Gethsemane. Early on in the books of, book of Acts, Peter and John are imprisoned for preaching about Jesus and an angel opens the prison door to set them free to preach again. Later in the book of Acts, Peter is again in prison, this time bound by secure chains and facing capital punishment. But an angel of the Lord appears to free Peter from his chains and to save him from certain death. Because of such stories in the New Testament, Christians have embraced the idea of guardian angels who watch over and protect us. For example, Martin Luther once wrote, the angels are very close to us and protect us at God's command. To be able to protect us, they have long arms so that they can easily chase Satan away when he tries to harm us. Angels stand before the face of the Father, next to the Son, but without effort they swiftly come to our aid. The Christian understanding of angels offers a vision of hope for the people of God. The world can be a very scary place. At times it truly is the battleground between the forces of good and evil. But the supernatural power of God is at work in the world through the saving power of the death and the resurrection of Jesus so that goodness and life shall ultimately triumph over evil and death. And in our own lives, we can know times of suffering and sadness. But God is at work in our lives to watch over us and to bless us with divine love. And at times, God can use the supernatural power of angels to guard and protect us. So today, as we celebrate the great festival of St. Michael and all angels, let us join together in the daily morning prayer of Martin Luther. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all danger and harm. We ask you to preserve and keep us this day also 
from all sin and evil, that in all our thoughts, words, and deeds, we may serve and please you. Into your hands we commend our bodies and souls and all that is ours. Let your holy angels have charge of us, that the wicked one have no power over us. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the safety of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Let us now stand and join together in the Nicene Creed, found on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning are based on Form 6, found on page 392 of the prayer book. And in peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, families friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Pakistan, all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who are in the and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop elect, Alan, our bishop, Reverend Julia Whiteworth, our bishop elect, Carol, our assistant bishop, our celebrant Father Richard, and for all other bishops and ministers. And in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for churches of the North Shore Deanery Grace Church, Salem, St. Peter's Church, Iglesia, St. Pedro, Salem, Christ Church, South Hamilton. Church of the Holy Name, Swamscott, and Trinity Church, 
tops of you. All who serve God in this church. The special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering especially Marty, June Miller, Elaine F., Elaine, Chris and Joe, Roxanne H., Kelly J., Ellen D., Ronald D. Angel Sr., Susie King, Joan and family, Amy, Mary Lee and Richard King, Irene C., Nancy M., Melissa C., Marsha J., Steve Fias, Doug Elke, Cindy, and anyone suffering from destruction and seasonal viruses. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name, our God. We pray for all who have died, especially Tim, world herder, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. And we pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No, no, no. Things done, left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us now share the peace with one another. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all.
Let us now join together in the great thanksgiving, beginning on page 361 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. The cup of blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen.
Please stand and we shall join together in the prayer after communion, found on page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Glad you're here today. And also those online, thank you for joining us here at St. Luke's in our worship. Just the usual announcement of the community supper, if you'd like to come, it's at 6 o'clock tonight. And also uh, the bishop-elect um, is inviting people to the cathedral for her ordination, which is on October the 17th, I think it is, or 19th. And if you wish to do that, there's a link online on the diocese so that you can be allowed into the church. I think there's limited numbers. But the last time I checked, there were still places to go. And also, uh, the retiring bishop with his uh, soiree at the aquarium on October the 4th. So if you'd like to attend that, that will be lovely. And also downstairs this time uh, for light refreshments and uh, coffee. Thank you.
Mas o forte 